What is up guys, this is Luke Hill for Kit Guru, and in this one we're taking a look at the Be Quiet Silent Loop 2 240mm all-in-one liquid cooler. The Silent Loop 2 represents Be Quiet's first deployment of ARGB lighting on their all-in-one liquid cooler series, but in typical Be Quiet fashion it's kept very subtle and very understated, there's no flashy in your face lighting. If that's what you prefer, then perhaps this is not the cooler for you, but if you want that Be Quiet, subtle, understated quality, the balance of noise performance that Be Quiet typically goes for, and a bit of RGB lighting on the pump block unit, which looks pretty good in our opinion, and keep watching this video. One of the other unique features that I wanna point out is the refill port on this cooler. So you can perform some degree of self-maintenance and Be Quiet does include a bottle of liquid so you can top up the cooler. That should enhance longevity, so perhaps that's a positive factor for you or perhaps you don't even care. The Silent Loop 2 is available in 120, 240, 280 and 360 millimeter versions. We've got the 240 millimeter version which comes in at about 120 pounds in the UK with availability starting in April. A three year warranty, so let's take a closer look. But before we do that, if you like what we do here at Kicker, give us a like and subscribe on the video. That really helps us support the YouTube channel. Check out the written review on the Kicker website. That supports us even more. And then consider buying a cool t-shirt like this, supporting us on Patreon, and interacting with us on the likes of Discord and other social media channels. Let's get back into it. If we first take a look at the bundle included with the Silent Loop 2, we can see a bottle of coolant fluid, and this is antifreeze into minus 7 degrees Celsius. So perhaps good if you put your system outside in the garage or something, I guess. But... Obviously this is the refillable coolant. You get some adapters, so you got an inline RGB adapter if you don't want to use the port on your motherboard. A four pin PWM fan splitter, of course the thermal paste, some of the mounting screws, and then you get a, kind of like a little SIM card removal tool that's used to toggle the Be Quiet LED on or off, specifically for the logo that is. Uh, Intel and AMD mounting hardware, and then of course the manual. If we now look at the Silent Loop 2 radiator, the first thing that we can note, in my opinion, is that there's not too many cables coming from the pump block unit. So you only get a three pin DC power connector and also a three pin RGB connector, which extends out to another three pin if you want to branch out and daisy chain. So that's very good. I know some of the competing solutions, especially from the likes of NZXT, have a whole host of cables. Not the case here for Be Quiet. The Silent Loop 2 is using a conventional 27mm thick radiator for the 240mm version and this is spray painted black, it is an aluminium radiator. The fin density is what I would personally call pretty much average, nothing particularly special or particularly dense, this is just quite conventional from what we tend to see for 240mm rads. And the tubes are 400mm in length and of course you've got the premium braided sleeve in as we typically see and would expect from a cooler of this price point. The refill port is mounted on the top side of the radiator and you just get in there with a Phillips head screwdriver. So when you want to refill the system and Be Quiet recommends you do this after two years, you simply unscrew this and then feed in the bottle of coolant as advised in the manual. It's quite a simple procedure by the look of it and you just feed it in so that there's no air bubbles in particular so you want to make sure the orientation is with the top at the top of course so that air can escape. Now I will say the ability to refill your cooler is probably a pretty good positive if you plan to keep the loop for quite a long time. However, the slightly cynical side of me says that be quiet suggesting you refill this after two years. That's not the case with some of the competing solutions from the premium OEMs like Acer Tech. Those units instead have a longer warranty than the be quiet model and they don't have a need for refilling the loop either. So perhaps a cynical point of view from my perspective, but is something to bear in mind there. And on the topic of competing units, we actually asked Be Quiet a few different times who the OEM for the Silent Loop 2 was, and we didn't get an answer. In fact, our contact, who's really very good and very helpful, said that he honestly didn't know, and that Be Quiet specifically didn't want to outline this because they're happy with the quality of the manufacturer, so they didn't want to make a big deal about it. Now, what that basically says to me is that it's not Cool It and it's not Acer Tech because anybody working with those two big guys will shout loudly about it because they're very high quality vendors. I spoke with James and he had a look at the cooling hardware and the mounting hardware, and this does look very similar to the Cougar Aqua 240 that we've both used. And that was one of the Chinese OEMs, so Fly Alpine Electronics Co, supposedly. We didn't get full information there. 
but it's probably a lesser known Chinese OEM, just for the fact that Be Quiet's not shouting loudly about it. But if we do get any more information about this, we'll let you know. Keeping focus with the pump block unit, we get a nickel plated copper cold plate and Be Quiet highlights that this is actually quite large in size so that you can handle larger heat spreader processors, the likes of Ryzen, Intel high-end desktop, and even Threadripper, though you do need a different bracket for Threadripper support and that's coming in June according to the Be Quiet website. Of course, you support any of the other CPUs that you're typically likely to use from AM4, LGA1200, and 2066. So one of the positives, obviously, the base being nickel-plated copper is that you get more flexibility with the thermal paste that you want to use. You can use liquid metal, for example, if you want to, whereas you probably wouldn't want to use that on bare copper. The physically large pump block unit houses the 2800 RPM three-pin powered pump. This, of course, uses the three-pin DC connection, so you do get quite limited speed control. And be quiet, quite a few times in the manual highlights between 9 to 12 volts of operation so clearly not as good a range of speed control as some of the PWM powered pump units. That's something to bear in mind. Be Quiet opts for a three chamber design and highlights that this physically larger implementation allows for the second chamber to have space for the coolant to spread and therefore reduce turbulence which will in turn reduce noise levels from the pump. The ARGB lighting for the Silent Loop 2 is found in a strip that comes around the top of the pump block unit and does look pretty good in my opinion. It's very subtle, it's not in your face and that's to be expected given this is Be Quiet's first attempt at ARGB cooling for an all-in-one liquid cooler. Obviously you get the standard control mechanisms through the motherboard or through the inline adapter and the Be Quiet logo does actually light up in white LED or you can use that SIM card adapter tool to prod in the button and then turn off the LEDs completely on the Be Quiet logo if you prefer. And this top cover has a brushed aluminium look to it, so especially when it's installed in the system, it does look high quality and premium in my opinion. In terms of fans, we've got two of Be Quiet's Silent Wings 3 high speed PWM blowers, and these are obviously 120mm units and they spin up to 2200 RPM maximum rotational speed. Going to Be Quiet's website, the minimum operating speed of the fans is somewhere in the sub 500 RPM range. Of course, this will depend on the tolerances in your motherboard UEFI fan control system or however else you choose to control the fans. Be Quiet does not include any form of fan control software like we see from NZXT or Corsair, for example, but to many users, that will actually be a net positive as opposed to a net negative. The fans are rated at 73 CFM and 3.37 mm H2O air pressure. They're a non-RGB all black design with seven blades and you do get airflow ridges on the blades to change the turbulence profile for the flow going through the fan frame. And then another feature to change the flow going through the fan frame is that you get a slightly inlet type nozzle design and this is in theory designed to accelerate the subsonic airflow going through the fan frame. Power comes from the four pin PWM connector and this is a reasonably length cable in my opinion and it looks good with the black braid in. Also for other noise examples because Be Quiet is all about balance between noise and performance you get some rubber tipped mounting so that when you screw the fans into the radiator you should be able to isolate the vibrations a little bit better. Anyway I think that covers the main aspects of the Silent Loop 2 in its broken down form like this. Let's get the cooler installed and have a closer look at how that process goes. AIM4 installation starts by using the default backplate supplied with your AMD motherboard. The front side clips are first removed. This is a little awkward if the motherboard is installed inside a case as the backplate will fall down, but it's very easy on a flat surface. Then the Be Quiet spacers and brackets are screwed into position to make the mounting system for the pump block unit. Again, this is a process that is difficult if the board is in vertical mode inside a chassis and has one wanting another hand, but it's not ludicrously difficult, especially not on a flat surface. With the brackets in position, the system for securing the pump block is fantastic. The spring-loaded screws are easy to tighten and they sit in position easily without batting up against other components. Plus, you only have to tighten the two screws whilst holding the heavy pump block unit in place. Now you can connect the cables, which is very straightforward as there's a reasonable number, and then manage the supplementary cables with relative ease using the four pin PWM fan splitter if you like. You can either run the RGB system through the included three pin addressable header, or you can add a converter onto that that uses the three pin header and takes you to an RGB hand tool box if you like, which just gives you a bunch of different modes that be quite outlines in the manual, and this is SATA powered. That specific inline RGB adapter is quite useful if your motherboard doesn't have a particularly good RGB system. 
Our test system is built around the Ryzen 9 5950X processor and this is running a precision boost overdrive mode to look at the power levels and the target temperatures with a sensible voltage and system operation and also with a conservative overclock of 4.45 gigahertz but with a hefty voltage of about 1.312 volts which is about 1.3 volts under load and this delivers over 220 watts of package power in regular scenarios. Gigabyte's B550 Aorus Master is the motherboard of choice thanks to its excellent VRM. We use a Seasonic TX1000 1 kilowatt power supply for clean delivery. Memory is served by 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 3600 memory. And we use a Gigabyte RTX 2060 Super graphics card with its 0% fan mode, so it doesn't really interfere with the cooler testing for the CPU coolers. We test using a chassis because we feel this is most representative of how users will actually operate the CPU cooler in a real world scenario. We know there are pros and cons to using a chassis, but we feel that it's very representative of real world usage. The chassis of choice is the Fractal Design Meshify 2, which Leo reviewed and really liked. This is a good chassis for cooling because you get plenty of ventilation, so it shouldn't really restrict any of the coolers in a significant manner and we use two included 140 millimeter 1000 RPM fans in the front as intake, and then the one included 140 millimeter 1000 RPM fan in the rear as exhaust. So we get a nice front to back airflow, and then the liquid coolers are mounted in the roof so they can blow out the roof. For testing, we record a 30 minute run of Cinebench R20 on loop, and then we record the steady state temperatures after that 30 minutes run. This gives plenty of time for the CPU to heat up and reach a steady state level so that we're looking at accurate load temperatures after a 30 minute period. Ambient's kept 22 to 24 degrees Celsius and when it varies outside of that point we'll run additional tests to make sure we get accurate data consistently. We also test the cooler with at least two installs and this eliminates the likelihood of having a dodgy install affecting our results and it also allows us to look at the correct thermal paste spread. If you want more details on our test procedure, head on over to the Kikuru website where you can see the information in the written review and also make sure you check out our recent article and video piece with a big roundup of coolers on our AM4 test system. Let's jump into the numbers. Let's start off with noise performance of the Silent Loop 2 at 100% fan speed. We test here at full fan speed because this gives us an accurate indication of where we expect the performance to be based on the noise output. Be Quiet Silent Loop 2 makes a promising start in the noise performance test with its two Silent Wings 3 PWM fans measuring 48 dBA at 12 inches from the chassis side panel. This is a strong result, especially given the 2200 RPM full speed operation of the 120mm blowers. For comparison, the Silent Loop 2 beats out the competing AO liquid coolers from our test dataset but it cannot match the preferential noise levels of the air coolers with dual lower speed fans. If you want even lower noise operation, which we would suggest for standard usage as 48 dBA is still very noticeable, the ability to leverage the sub 500 to 2200 RPM fan speed range is a positive. However, the restricted control abilities of the three pin 2800 RPM pump unit will limit just how much the noise output can be reduced aside from controlling the fan speed. Our overclock performance test is the main thermal test for this piece and that represents a pretty tough stress test for the CPU coolers because we're running the Ryzen 9 5950X at quite a high package power output. As we lock in the voltage and the clock speed, the temperature results between the different coolers are directly comparable. Also, note the use of delta temperatures in the chart so then you can add on your own ambient conditions and find a rough estimate of where this cooler would sit in your environment. With the full speed fans and pump unit unleashed at our Ryzen 9 5950X overclock test, the Be Quiet Silent Loop 2 performs well. We recorded a delta temperature of 61 degrees Celsius, which translates into low to mid 80s in real operating temperature terms in typical ambient conditions for the UK. This is a positive result and has the Silent Loop 2 matching the physically bigger Silverstone Ice Gem 240P, whilst beating out the Cougar Dual Fan all in one, as well as the air coolers. In fact, the performance from Be Quiet's 240mm all-in-one is close to that of G-Skill's 360mm liquid cooler, which also operates with a trio of high-speed fans and a high RPM pump unit. Given the preferential noise output and slimmer form factor versus Silverstone's similarly priced Ice Gem 240p, we would call this initial temperature test a minor victory for the Be Quiet Silent Loop 2. Having assessed the Silent Loop 2 at full fan speed, we see where it sits in the performance hierarchy, but of course, as is always the case with all-in-one liquid coolers and CPU coolers in general, high speed, good quality fans could just blast the way to the top of the charts. So now we need to look at the 40 dBA noise locked test. 
Drop in the Silent Loop 2 coolers, pair of Silent Wings 3 120mm PWM fans, the 63% speed achieves our desired 40 dBA target. This translates into an operating speed of around 1400 RPM for both fans, with the 3 pin powered pump unit still locked at 2800 RPM. This is actually less of a reduction from maximum fan speed as compared to the other all-in-ones in our data set. That is despite Be Quiet's Silent Wings 3 PWM fans being rated at a high 2200 RPM maximum speed. This is, at least on the face of it, a testament to the noise efficiency of the Silent Wings 3 120mm fans. We'll have to see how the performance bears out in the 40 dBA operation mode with temperature testing. The Silent Loop 2 does a good job at maintaining much of its cooling performance despite running at 63% of its maximum fan speed as dictated by the 40 dBA noise lock. Now we see the Be Quiet 240mm all-in-one outperforming the competing dual 120mm liquid coolers as well as the dual fan air coolers. In fact, the Silent Loop 2 matches G-Skill's 360mm cooler in terms of temperature numbers, but the well-designed Fantex and Acetec 360mm all-in-one is a step too far. This is a positive result for the Silent Loop 2 and emphasizes the superb noise-based performance efficiency of Be Quiet's quality Silent Wings 3 120mm fans. One could certainly argue that Be Quiet is living up to the company's name when factoring in cooling performance, with noise balance. If we now look at VRM temperatures when running our manually overclocked test at full fan speed, the Silent Loop 2 is subpar, but of course this is heavily influenced by radiator positioning and therefore fan positioning inside one's chassis, as well as the specific design and position of one's motherboard VRM heatsink, of course. With all that said, the Silent Loop 2 is close to the bottom of our chart with VRM temperatures in the order of 70 degrees Celsius, and the 240mm unit is also poor when focused on 40 dBA locked fan speed performance, registering a mid-70s VRM sensor result. If you want a CPU cooler that has the benefit of helping out the VRMs, the Silent Loop 2 is not a particularly strong option if your system and test configuration roughly matches ours. We'll have a quick look at precision boost overdrive results with the Silent Loop 2, as this gives us an indication of temperature levels and clock speeds achievable when leveraging AMD's pretty smart operating conditions for the processor. What we want to see here is how far the cooler can push the chip while staying below that 90C temperature target from precision boost overdrive. And of course, if we see numbers below 90 degrees Celsius with the given clock speed, that just means there's more headroom for manual overclocking while keeping safe temperature levels. Be Quiet again does well in this cooling test with the Silent Loop 2 240mm unit. We see a performance level that is only bested by the 360mm all-in-ones from our data set. Cougars and Silverstone's competing 240mm options are beaten by a measurable and repeatable margin. Managing a little over 220 watts of CPU package power and returning a mid-80 degrees Celsius CPU operating temperature highlights that the Silent Loop 2 has more performance left in the tank. That point is also notable with the 4.37 GHz average operating core clock for our 5950X CPU, which is comparable to the 240mm units, but not quite as high as the 360mm pack leaders. And then if we quickly brush over the stock performance numbers, because the 129 watt CPU package power doesn't really push CPU coolers for the types that we're looking at, the Silent Loop 2 manages around about 55 degrees Celsius and around about 3880 to 3890 megahertz for the average core clock. And this is pretty much comparable to the other 240 millimeter coolers. So it doesn't really tell us all that much, but we'll include the data for reference. If we close out this one, I think we can quite happily say that the Be Quiet Silent Loop 2 does deliver in terms of cooling performance and it really does deliver a good balance between cooling performance and noise performance. Yes, it's not as strong as the 360mm coolers that we tested in general in our AMD test system, but it does hold its own and actually quite convincingly beat some of the other 240mm units that we have for our current data set. In fact, we've got to be a bit more reasonable to be quiet there because some of the numbers were actually very close to G-Skill's 360mm all-in-one cooler, so that's not bad from a 240mm unit and clearly highlights that it's a quality design. Where we were particularly impressed actually was the 40 dBA locked noise operation and this is because the Silent Wings 3 PWM fans are absolutely superb when it comes to a balance between noise efficiency and thermal performance. We could run them at about 63% of their original 2200 RPM fan speed and doing so actually allowed us to match G-Skill's 360mm all-in-one in terms of cooling performance and open up a gap versus the other 240mm units. So that is a testament to the Silent Wings 3 PWM fans. Good job there, be quiet. Of course, one caveat there 
is you are somewhat restricted by how low you can tune the noise levels because the 2800 RPM pump is 3-pin DC controlled so you don't get all that great level of speed control like you would from a PWM pump on the Acetec units for example. We like the RGB lighting on the pump block unit, it's pretty subtle, you get an edge lighting strip and of course the white lit Be Quiet logo. Overall it looks pretty premium in our opinion and it's not over the top and in your face. So for Be Quiet's first attempt at ARGB lighting on a liquid cooler, it kind of makes sense because it's just a small transition. And then we come to the pricing of £120, which is certainly not cheap, especially when factored in with the three-year warranty. But you do get a refill port that should allow you to extend your lifespan. So there are clear strengths and cons for the Be Quiet Silent Loop 2. Overall though, happy with the performance, especially the noise balance performance, so a pretty good unit if you've got 120 quid to spend and you like the styling. I've been Luke Hill for Kit Group. Thank you for watching our video review of the Be Quiet Silent Loop 2 CPU cooler. Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Do you like the Silent Loop 2? If you like this video, give us a like, subscribe, really helps us support the YouTube channel. Check out the written review on the Kikuru website, that really helps us out. And consider buying a cool t-shirt like this, and then interacting with us on Twitter and Discord and the likes. Catch you in the next one.